in a specific cosmic formula has the ability to think in an entirely different context of thought as we know it. In fact, it has nothing to do with thought. This is the energy behind creation, but not as any religion has related. It has absolutely nothing to do with any religion, and it is a, quote, natural, unquote, energy, and not a supernatural energy, or a supernatural, quote, being, unquote. In fact, when the mechanisms of thought stops in the human being, and, and, there, and the human uh, goes beyond the conditioned self and to the natural unconditioned state, there is a natural connection between the human brain and this energy. Just as there is order in the cosmos, although there is still disorder in the cosmos, there's all, but overall in the cosmos there is incredible order, uh, this brings about an order of, or harmony to the brain. And the brain becomes part of the cosmo, cosmic mind, part of the cosmic mind, thus going beyond the illusions of self. Simply put, we are part of this energy. We are energy. Quite literally, everything is energy. Even that steel beam, believe it or not, is a combination of uh, molecular structure of energy. So this means we came from the cosmos. This means everything came from the cosmos and that we are part of the cosmos and that we will probably return to the cosmos. This work is mathematical proof that there is a creative energy of this universe. This is proof that there is a creator. And if we go on uh, with the equations, we end up coming with, 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 when given a combination of matter, energy, and electromagnetism with other specific components and unfathomable amounts of these components, we get an energy that has, quote, intelligence, unquote. Is this so difficult to understand? Although this intelligence is not the same kind of intelligence as that of the human brain, or the brain of any other animal on earth, for all practical purposes, the cosmos is our maker. And it is the creative intelligence behind, creative intelligence behind life, non-life, and behind the universe itself. There is no need to have a maker for the cosmos, for the cosmos, because it was already there. So that answers that age-old question of who made the cosmos who made the maker, there was no need for a maker because the cosmos was always there. The cosmos can direct the mutation in organisms by different means such as cosmic rays and neutrinos and probably some other yet to be found components. This is not quote far out unquote. This is not far out. Your religion is what is far out and atheism is a religion, a belief system. This is reality. This is fact. You don't have to understand these complex formulas to understand the truth of this. Understanding this is the only hope for mankind, for the survival of man and woman, for the survival of this awesome planet and most everything on it, which we will most likely never survive, but it wouldn't have lasted but so long anyway. The natural end will eventually come, and there will be nothing we can do about it. If we don't destroy this planet and everything on it by self-will and stupidity, it will still eventually come to an end. The polarity is already beginning what is called spotting, and after this occurs, it is only a matter of time before the magnetic field dissipates and fi finally gives out completely. At this point, the core will begin to cool down, and the planet Earth will begin to die. And this is only this, and this is only if 
This happens before our sun grows bigger and destroys this planet by heat. It is in the hands of mankind, and if, if he will get out of the way, it is all in the hands of the Creator. We have Maxwell's uh, wave equation. Poison's uh, Paul Soon's uh, equation, uh, you know, uh, special cases of uh, energy and energy fields. And if we um, go on through this uh, process of math, uh, quantum mechanics, quantum physics, uh, we end up with the fact that electricity and magnetism equal electromagnetism. And we go on, we find about kinetic energy, and it's stored in magnetic fields. And we actually have components uh, where we can write this kinetic energy and uh, electrons' velocity, according to electrons' velocity. We can solve the equations, you know, one and two, and there's the equivalent of, of Bohr's result, which may be obtained by substituting this equation, the modern definition for the fluxoid quantum. And we have uh, the equation for the photon and flux tunnels, which are enormous uh, uh, forms of uh, concentrated energies. And we go on to uh, the magnetic field and the strength of the tunnel wall in these uh, flux tunnels. And, uh, and we come to the higher orbital, uh, creative energy, the higher orbital of energy behind all creation. This is an intelligence within the infinite cosmos that is completely different than the intelligence we use with our brains. It also communicates and sees in a different way. But the fact is, mathematically, there is a creative intelligence, and you can connect with it if you get out of the way and go beyond all your knowledge and your 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 um, information that you have called the known. If you go beyond the known, you can come to this unknown. And uh, and if you get out of the way and go beyond all that, all the realms of deception, and go beyond your conditioning, I have shown mathematically, and by the way, of many complex designs through evolutionary processes that an outside energy or cosmic energy, a higher power, a great spirit or creative intelligence or creator or God, if you will, the name is not the thing, does in fact exist. So the bottom line is, if we're going to ever come to terms with what we are, we have to look at the fact that religions, religions have been created by thought. The God of religions does not exist. Jesus Christ and the religions based on that myth are just that. They're a fable. And we have to realize that it's very important for us to see what's going on with our um, systems of thought. And we have to realize what we're creating, the divisions we're creating, and, and we have to realize the processes of this incredible conditioning biologically, genetically, and environmentally. We have to go beyond all the known in order to come upon the unknown. We have to discard the known to come upon the unknown. And then we're free, psychologically free. And then we realize that we are responsible for this planet and for the nature and to preserve nature. And we are responsible for our own actions. Peace.